I don't know how much Carl likes Ember, though. I haven't really seen him play it a whole lot. Pangolia, okay, okay. We saw this earlier, though, and now you're playing, like, this is Pango into Grimstroke 2, so Soulbind's never fun. But we saw the big issue was, is that throughout the game, you just use Stone Gaze, and now Pango has to be... It makes it very awkward on how you use Rolling Thunder in the team fights, and it's already not the easiest spell to use in some environments and some terrains on the map. I'm thinking though, could they fit in a mid Pango? Like Pango Ten Lash sounds like a terrible remaining. lane, to be honest. Yep. No setup, no nothing. And Dusa again looks pretty unanswered though. Radiant team ban. Is there? So they do ban the Shadow Demon here. Loss for Galaxy. There. Thinking that it's going to be a Lesh mid and then running the four pick. I mean, I guess you do want magic damage against the Void Spirit and T1 do lack ways to take towers at like the fifth to 15 minutes. And then Luna can even Five maybe by 15 remaining. minutes, Luna can kind of help take these objectives. But at least it gives you a way to... I actually really like play, playing Leshes to this game because you can then infiltrate the triangle a lot easier with your levels and take the stacks away um but it's a support i feel like you can't do that although what so we're thinking so you put the lesh as a four then you need like an off laner that sets up for him right but i feel like is pango enough then to infiltrate the jungle if you get to level six fast enough that's always a big question with pango here right Ten how is this lane gonna go because if they pick another four it would be very desirable. Like Pango plus a decent laner. Like like a Tusk. Something like that. Gives him Roshan taking potential as well, which is really nice. And Am amplified with the Pango lucky shot. Ten seconds oh, remaining. Gives him safe as well. Five seconds remaining. Other than Tusk, I don't really see a whole lot of Earth Spirit potentially, but the lane isn't that strong. Oh, so you got a pick or you got a random? Ogre. <laughs> Dude, I have right, not so seen a... this here in so long. <laughs> it's it's a far Phoenix then. That sounds... Oh, mid Ogre, let's go, dude. Dude. <laughs> like, you, you surely don't last pick an Ogre if you plan to pick it, right? Ten seconds remaining. <sighs> dude, I got no Five idea about the Ogre. Remaining. I mean, it's... They've got a lot of ways to kind of amp up Luna, but then you're... What do they go? A Night Stalker. Oh, this is a Night Stalker. bonkers draw. Okay. Who's playing what? Into the Phoenix. That is so weird. You know what the uh, interaction is, right? Uh, yeah, the supernova turns to day. Yeah, even during Dark Ascension. Yeah. There's the five ogre. Man, that is that is a weird ogre pick. But it's an even more weird Night Stalker pick. Like Phoenix is considered one of the hardest counters to, to Night Stalker simply because you become kind of useless for six seconds. Alright, so is the uh, the last pick's really flipping you in, in one way in particular, or are we still like this is just going to be another Dusa versus Luna, which we've kind of started to see the Pro Series turn into? Um, we'll come down a lot to the mid matchup and how much the Pangolier can do. Like, Lash against Voice Spirit is a very even lane, but sometimes if you make one mistake, the other can pop off and just completely dominate the game, you know? And the same with the Pangolier. Like in theory, he should have a terrible lane, but today we started Pangolier dominate the Medusa lane, so I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. I think overall, it looks a little bit more solid, though, for Galaxy Racer. Probably. Maybe. Both drafts are weird. How do you last pick Ogre? <laughs> The, Prepare for battle. the only thing I can think of is that you're going with 
either team have this big like late game prowess and you're like how do we amp him more because remember a while ago we were seeing like a, a crap load of slaughter and it's like whoever has slaughter late game the enemy teams are going to be minus 20 armor and your position one just has just loves life then you're able to have a much easier time dealing damage in the late game when the enemy team is all pretty much minus 20 armor so i wonder if this is just like let's amp you as much as possible give you the blood loss you know give you the minus armor in the lucky shot but die they've got their own kind of way to amp up Deusa as well like enchantress he can build utility we've seen solar crest pretty consistently you can go for the holy locket the force up as well maybe to help reposition in your dream so uh, that's all i can really think of like just try and really flash farm with his blood loss luna and then have a huge spike in the mid game I mean, it's not bad also for Lash because you get the bonus movement speed, of course. It's just... If you wanted to pick Ogre... You can't do, do it, it earlier. Earlier. Yeah. Because it's not like really a game-winning pick, you know? But... Well, we'll see how it goes. I'm very curious about his Night Stalker in particular. Because his lane shouldn't be too good. And then his night times, once the phoenix is six, it's not going to be easy either. He's just got so much vision, actually. It's crazy. What are you need to walk? Look at this night time. He's just seeing everything. I cuckoo. 1800. Very nice. Definitely. Okay, boys. How we doing? Sitting across the, the river. This is... uh. Just the, the boundary right now. You cross that line, you're a dead man. And then the night, night stalker is very timid. You look at him walk. He's like limping. Like, <laughs> the battle begins. Who's gonna win the level one fight? Let's go. Wait, no what fight. the? That's where did that split earth come from? Did you see that? Was that a weird animation for you as well? Okay, <laughs> dear. Okay, it was just me. That's alright. I'm. I'm I think it's your head. Yeah. TB8. What's uh what's the thoughts on this void spirit set? Cause this is wow, this is a dope set. Where's that from? The battle pass? Uh oh Jesus. It's yeah, the, the immortal. From this battle pass or what? I believe so, yes. Expectations are that looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. Doesn't really look like void spirit though. What do you mean, pretty cool? This is dope. Uh, it could be better. Could be better. What the hell? Let's find out. Uh, I can't. Oh, yeah, another think... Discord. <laughs> Dude, well, God. <laughs> maybe it's time to go to Ventrilo. <laughs> Look, see, Alacrity say he's got the advantage right now. It all comes down to cosmetics. Alacrity has his dope ass looking set. Carl's his naked ass less track that just looks. Like an abomination, honestly, and uh, I, yeah, you got the cosmetic advantage. You've you've got the, uh, it's it's pay to win here, I believe. I mean, there's some pay to win cosmetics, but I don't think <laughs> those are part of it. Also, my cosmetic game is super bad too. I'm I'm anti cosmetic. What's uh what's the reasoning behind the anti cosmetic black? I'm a, I'm a vanilla guy. I like vanilla ice cream. Bro. Cookies and what? cream is where it's at. Oh yeah, Lecrity, one more hit. Ah, one more hit, first blood! First blood. Oh. First blood. Uh, you were saying this mid lane. Yeah, it can get at a stage where if anyone comes out ahead in the laning stage and they can really snowball and being first blood over to Gull is no bueno. Yeah, a kill like that can really snowball hard. Cause Lash is like half a level ahead now. If he gets to six fast, faster than, than Void Spirit at least, can turn to a kill very easily. How do we feel about this bottom lane here for Mizu? What does the Night Stalker need to get out of like the first five minutes? Are you just hoping you get like a reasonable amount of CS or? Is, is this a time where he is able to pressure? You pick this matchup knowing what you're facing. Like, Ogre Luna is really strong. What you want to do 
like in a perfect case scenario, is be really strong in the first night time. But the way this is going, it might not be that way. We might have to see some rotations come through from Alacrity early or even the Enchantress. But I mean, leaving Medusa then at that stage, unless Medusa has a really good time in the lane, is, is not going to be uh, potential here, I think, for Galaxy Racer. So this now comes down to the mid matchup with Alacrity already giving over that first blood and you're minimizing the experience he can potentially have early. And, you know, with. A solid timing on six, we could have seen that rotation bot. He's doing pretty decently now though, in terms of CS. And they're both pretty low, like one misstep could kill either one of them. Do you see Carl has, has opted for the two points in the Lightning Storm, so going for a, a little bit different of a build than, than what we saw earlier from uh, Alacrity's Lesh Rack? Yeah, not maxed Edict, he's going for lane control build. However, he's sitting super low, and there's no rune for a while. If he's not careful, Electricity can kill him instead. Villainy. The, uh, a lucky remnant into Resonant Pulse. Carl uh, repositions. He might dive the tower here. Electricity's got Glyph as well. So let's see if... At the end of that. Oh, he actually runs into it. Oh, Carl? This is very awkward now. What's going on? Alacrity? He doesn't have mana for Resonant Pulse till the last second. Probably wouldn't have killed, but yeah, you... <laughs> They're both playing with fire. Savage Shot bots alone. He's he's a goner here. No mana for TP. They've already used all their stuns, and they can just chase Can't him die to down. Dog, they? Oh, maybe they won't with missing the stroke. Mizu doesn't have enough mana for the void, but... Majuke up to the northern side. He's got TP. There's no way Savage makes it out. Joke camp. Can he see him? Yes, they just saw Luna. Thought, oh, no, maybe they didn't see him. Savage? He's not even going to go for a TP. He's just running rings around them right now. Still no mana without the stroke. What's going on? Might actually be better to just die. Olga coming in with a tango though. Uh, uh, what? How does he not die? That missed stroke from Yokam. You hate to see it. In your dream, solo kills Goku. <laughs> what? <laughs> Radiance Courier has been killed. <laughs> Mizu's well got Void. If they stroke slow into Void, but Savage is so fast without boots. Mid time now. This is where Big Boy spreads his wings. Mid lane? Alacrity? Oh my god. Everyone's so weak across the map. This is a, a tense start to our laning stage here. Yeah. How's In the Dream looking? Pretty good, pretty good. Luna's actually getting pressured a lot more than I thought he would. And now bot lane is getting a little bit more difficult, perhaps. Nighttime is always... But now, Night Stalker is alone. I guess he's like, okay, we won v 2 you. Now it's time so to return the favor. Yeah, this is kind of weird, because Alacrity was really low, so Yokem had to come over and give him a salve, but now you're... Not pairing the Night Stalker up with the Grimstroke, who really wants to get active at that first night time. Like you said, like this can be, if this can really give Night Stalker a game or not. Like if he doesn't have a, a solid first night time, then we can really see him fall off because he's not a hero that can keep up in farm very well at all. As Polo should get chased down here. Carl's gonna pick up the kill. It's got a regen going as well, so this Slash Track will have full resources to play with and even take a stack away thanks to the regen. Zephyr. Might get traded though. They got the Vol Assassin with the Inkspell stun. Carl's trying to hold him back enough with the Split Earth, and in fact, that is enough. Okay. He could have gotten a lot more out of this region rune if. Okay, he went mana boots anyway, got full mana. Looking for rotation on the Dusa. Oh! In your dream. Oh, he got the split shot. Oh my god, he kept the point. Potentially skill stone gaze, but. No more. Unlucky. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. <laughs> unlucky. Oh my god, there's so many stacks. The flash runs in there. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dude, the flash runs in there right now. He stacked a small camp for himself. I not have enough mana now. It's a couple okay, of. Okay, good, good old clap. Good old impetus. All of a sudden, half health. Classic good enchantress. You can't say that, it's four legs. Dude. It's just a 
self That's rude. harmful talk there. Yeah, very rude. Uh, I mean, look at how different of a game this is. Radiant already have gotten out to the triangle, block the ancients, block the hard. Middle tower and we saw attack. previously Yokam was trying to make some stacks there, but now it's going to be... He's going to go back and try and stack it again. So this is two stacks now that is going to be missed because of these sentries. And we have been t speaking about consistently today the importance of you know, ancient clearers and, and stack clearers. And it's just continuing to, to show here. Look, super well done. That's a lot of missed money. Under attack. Can check. you find the other as well? Or oh, just puts it right in the middle. He's <laughs> doing my move. <laughs> He's like, He's no, like, I ain't. I don't know what to do, so I'm just putting <laughs> it right there. Bro, screw if they've got a ward on a high ground. I just want this sentry. They really need access to the ancients, though, so. In your dream. Oh. No, it barely missed him. Looking for the ancient top tower instead. Apollo Sun. No, get out of the area, sir. He's going to ward. He should see Carl now. Although, but he ran into enchant. So, Apollo is. Nice sidestep. Cuckoo can bounce back. In fact, it's going to do the old fashioned way with a roll. Although, he's still alive at the moment. Alacrid is going to TP in. So he's one charge in the ultimate. We'll now drop a secondary one to kill in off the Phoenix. As now they're going to turn their attention on Carl, but he's got Cloak and Wand already on the left track. This is a difficult person to bring down. They're going to try and TP in the Night Stalker. The Dark Ascension was used, which cleaned off the uh, the Ogre Magi down bot. Uh, what? No. Only one point silence here. So we've got Swashbuckle. So Cuckoo should be okay, but Alacrity. He's got another round of the ultimate available. Didn't okay, Cuckoo, unfortunate started. positioning on the TP there, and Amizu was just able to clip him. Yeah, I'm surprised to even TP, to be honest. Like, he had full mana and health. Where did he want to go? Uh, he was a fountain TP, right? Uh, he went down bot. Oh, down bot, okay. Well, Sephiroth's happy. <laughs> like, thank you. Thank you for dying, level 5. He's probably going to stick around. Mizu. Just give Mizu the tip, in fact. He's like, Phew, you enabled me to get all this gold and experience, which is something that the Phoenix loves. So and they can give the tome over to... I've given tome to Ogre, no, doesn't feel the greatest as mid lane. Fire Blast able to set up, but Lacrity, he's uh, rushing a Witchblade here. How do, you, how do you feel about this item on the, on the Void? Not the biggest fan, personally. I'm a big Yules into Axe fan. Like, Witchblade... Honestly, I don't know how to feel about it on a lot of heroes. It's very expensive. Doesn't give you a whole lot of utility. Zephyr? Gone. Well, he was going aggro on Joe Camp. Yeah, that's a tip. <laughs> Mid lane, they need to bring the numbers now to defend the tower. With maxed out Edict and how tanky Carl is, he's recognizing the lack of damage that Galaxy Racer are going to have early. And if they can survive through the initial ultimate usage on the Void Spirit, which they're trying to use now to bring down Cuckoo, Rolling Thunder just a little bit too late. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. He died twice like this. That must feel bad. His game's really taken a bit of a hit. We saw earlier in the day this Pango had a strong performance versus Medusa, especially in lane, and then as the game went on, I mean, there was a an early Diffusal Blade build that we saw, but you know, so, so far with the three deaths on Cuckoo's bottom of the net worth of the cause. Yeah, it feels really bad. Cause against Dusa and Nightstalker, you're not going to have an easy time at all. I'm not quite sure where he's going to recover. they got to find some team fights. At least Leshuk is doing very well. It looks like Savage is doing very well too. 30 net worth. Yashi completed. Hasn't gone for a Dragon Lance this game. Didn't need the uh, the Mask of Madness though. He's, he's got the Possessed Mask. This is a great timing of the smoke. They're going to dodge Whitemon and Carl here as a lackey. Oh, run straight to Savage. That's not the position you want to be. And just stick on the high ground, try and take the stack. And let's see if Galaxy Racer, how they can combat this now. These heroes aren't the greatest at taking Ancients, and I mean, Medusa's super immobile, so they might just have to give it up. They're going to be cautious about mid lane as well, continuing to put a lot of pressure on his Carl. Like, this game really reminds me of game one. Like, going down the same route-ish. 
where the Medusa just free farmed the entire time and ultimately was just out of control. Polyson should be chased down here, Enchantress. A little bit of an expedition into the triangle. Fortunately, it's going to cost him his life, but I guess just space for Nabusa to continue farming around the triangle. And uh, as long as they can delay this for as long as possible. And Yokam, we saw here their priority on giving the Grimstroker an early Aghanim's timing. You're probably going to see it again. The side of uh, Galaxy Racer. Night Stalker even went for a Midas. He's got a blink Aghanim's queued up. So they are all in on kind of uh, going for the late game here. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Uh, well, top tower should be down. They want to at least Dyer's mount a defense down. though. Alacrity jump in, Illusions not able to take the remnant. Now Mizu with the it's ultimate committed. We needs to be a big rolling thunder from Cuckoo to force back Galaxy Racer. They'll Delta split away. Polo, they're just going to eat Radiant all the Pulse Novas. I mean, top. killing Carl right now with Hood already and the stats that he's got seems like a difficult task. You could dish out everything, but once the abilities have expired here and if it's they use them split, and you see Carl can just run Supreme. Who have they caught out though? It is going to be Savage. Oh. Mizu and In Your Dream, just a duo cleaning off the Luna. That, that's a massive fight for T1 if they get those two kills and Savage doesn't die. Yeah, a little bit too greedy. Oh my god, he's 2,000 effort behind now. Medusa. This might just turn into the Medusa show again. Because, as we said in the draft analysis, Radiant's they have no answer to the Medusa whatsoever. Like, Leshrock is terrible against Medusa. Absolutely terrible. You can't do anything against Medusa. Level 14 already. He's leveling with the clock. It's always a bad, bad sign. Is there a route here for T1 where they can hit a pretty fast-paced timing, where they can kind of beat the Medusa before she hits this kind of point of no return? I mean, she has Crystal Ascardi picked up. I feel like if they can't stop her in her tracks before she gets there, it's going to become very difficult. Unless they can really keep the other heroes down to nothing. But Alacrity and Mizu are doing very well for themselves as well. A to the and you see the scaling potential isn't going to be there for the, the Cuckoo Pangos. He's going to look to get involved. Put the set up and an even better stance from Yokan. Disrupts the chain lockdown so Mizu with his speediness can get to the safety of the tower. Now Galaxy Racer, they want to bring the goons to take a full 5 on 5 fight. As as soon as the stone gaze is dropped, they just have to reposition. Alacrity is able to hunt down Cuckoo with the Rolling Thunder on cooldown. Swashbuckle's up in a couple of seconds, but Mizu, 476 movement speed. They should be able to chase down the Pango. It's going to make sure he doesn't get body blocked. They're going to go ultra deep, though. Yeah, good retaliation again. And you can see the gold advantage is growing. 4k now. Like, every two minutes, it's plus 1k. Oh, he actually went for the snake cooldown on Deuce, another attack speed, interesting. The tower, they have a cliff. Yeah. You really don't want to dodge any fights if you can help it. Night oh, he actually went for a Midas on Night I just saw that. Sue? Alakali is going to try and counter initiate straight on top of Carl. But once the hoods pop, you see the damage. It's actually still coming into play now. A supernova. They're just able to reset the stuns without the rolling thunder. And this is going to be another issue where Cuckoo really needs items to protect that supernova. Alacrity's back in. This is another game we've seen the Void Spirit just be completely unanswered as well at the early stage. And Alacrity's 4 2 and 2. And this is getting really, really dire for T1. Yeah. 6k gold did already after the tower potentially 7k and it's just falling into the same pattern as game one it really is like they're not doing enough damage early on in fact they're quite far behind early on like you're trailing almost 3k net worth behind the medusa as a luna that is never where you want to be at it's not like they have i mean they've got decent team fire but the easy ways to start is only going to come once Cuckoo gets this blink. So maybe with that and the next daytime occurring, this could be where T1 look to to kind of spring their advantage potentially. 
but 6,000 deficit Dyer's they're really not in a commanding position. Got in the mid tower though. Took him 70 minutes despite having a Lash Rock. Now Dusa is not committing into the crystal at first. Would have actually liked it quite a bit. Would have given her a lot of damage to play with. By choosing to go for the Scardi route instead. Why do you think he's not buying out though? Uh, yeah, I, I do not particularly know why you wouldn't buy out here. Like the, he the must zipper. just be. No, <laughs> friends is him, but you know, okay, oh, just... he, he did buy the crystals. That's nice. Treasures. Good. Ooh, engines are blocked again. And your dream is like D block <laughs> now. Sentry. What are you doing? Can they vote? Shh. Tom. They found Carl. Uh, With this death, they're gonna try and take Roshan though. They've got a double damage rune and the lucky shot. Purifier. Shh. They sniff it out. And you've got to start bringing it down now. This is not the fastest Commit. Rosh. They're not all committing. You didn't get the lucky shot, Brox. Oh, they're not committing. Oh, how are they all just like... What, are, what is Galaxy Racer doing though? They're all just like sitting together top. Dude, Dark Ascension's gonna expire soon. They might not see this. It's oh, yeah, they're seeing it now. No, what? they're not. They got Rosh. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. <laughs> okay, another freebie. Got away with murder there. Gee. If they see this at all, it's just gonna be dire and they win the game off it. <laughs> Despite all that though, they got 2k gold lead advantage somehow. Interesting. Grimstroke. Man, he has a Philosopher's Stone. This time the Axe is gonna come so much faster. He actually, he had the Ag Shard, oh, sorry, the Aghanim's queued up. He just swapped for the Ag Shard, which I find a bit interesting. The Ag Shard is not bad against his stuns, but yeah, I would much rather see the Axe as well. Actual winning condition. Is he just like, okay, the Medusa, like we don't need that extra damage on Luna. Let me just continue to buff up my, do my Medusa. Uh, yeah. Could definitely be the thought process. Cause Dusa also went for the Crystalis first, so maybe he feels like he doesn't need the extra damage. He's not buying out though. So. Charging up the Rolling Thunder mid. Hello. Is able to get the Nature's Attendance off, but they commit the Rolling Thunder just for the Enchantress kill. It doesn't have the biggest cooldown. It's up in 60 seconds here. But if you reveal the Blink now on Pango. Pop the Medusa ult though to try and defend your uh, Enchantress. It's quite a long cooldown, 90 seconds. So top tower is probably just gone now. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Okay, maybe outpost control coming the way of T1. Still, Dyer haven't been able to claim a T2 tower just yet. And all in all, attack. they Dyer's this could be a good attack. way to come back. They're trying to fight without Dyer's stone gaze. I gotta be really careful when you do this. The wraparound. You need to group up on the Dark Ascension. Make sure you can't get picked off on the back line. They're instantly on top of the Phoenix. They need the Supernova for the team fight, but how are you able to protect Zephyr? He'll just get away. And now with the Supernova, it's gonna force them further and further back. Alacrity, one more Glaive claims the kill. They've dealt with the Aegis. Carl sticking around in the tree line as well, but now it's second round and round of the Onslaught here. But Mizu, he's overstepped the mark. The shard's gonna come into play, it gives him a lot of bonus health back, but still they're targeting down Savage. The Rolling Thunder as well doesn't do anything because of the Soulbind, but Savage, one more right click will fall. Triple kill for In Your Dream. And now the two-legged Abomination has to retreat away with Zephyr as well. Did you see that Soulbind? Yeah. It literally won them the entire fight. Like, Phoenix didn't want to stop his laser, and, and Kuku was just like... Like, the tire wouldn't just come out of the hole, man. They were just stuck. And they, they picked the Pango into this. Like, they did. Oh, this is... Even to the Dusa as well. And there was a triple kill for the Dusa. Man, it's a horrendous team fight. That's a Scotty picked up already. He's so massive on this Dusa. It's kind of ridiculous. It's just very similar to what we saw in game two, where Galaxy Racer, the way they were winning some of the team fights was just leaving the Medusa and getting quick pickoffs, having the numbers advantage, kiting Dusa, resetting. But T1, they weren't able to do that at the start. And, and it's really going to come into play on this 
You, know, you need the Rolling Thunder, you need the Fall Up with like an Eclipse or you know, the, the less magic damage, but it's now like Cuckoo's an incredibly experienced player. He's got to recognize the angle he has to take for team side. You have to be away from the team. You just cannot get controlled through Soulbind. Otherwise, we're going to see what just happened occur again. Radiant Trying again. The bulldoze in the way top. This time, no Dark Ascension. They're rolling in. Cuckoo. Dark Ascension up now. Okay. Well, that roll's been completely wasted. And now Carl. Scotty, so he can't reset 100 oh movement God. speed. Oh, oh no. Just insanity trying to do the same thing over again. And you are going. Yeah. I mean, this is now almost BKB on Mizu. This Midas is soon going to be paying off as if Night Saw can get into the late game. And I mean, especially with the Deucer, is 5,000 net worth over his counterpart. Yeah, this is looking really rough. Almost Radiant seems like, that might be the point of no return. Allegri just playing around with them. You have no stuns to stop him. You have one Ogre, that's Radiant's it. Top tower has fallen. I really got a question, that Ogre last pick, like... You know, Night Stalker at least has like a really good purpose, you know, but like, what's the purpose of like a late pick Ogre? You're still a Bloodlust bot. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got three points in it now. I mean, I just... I don't know. This game's looking... I mean, what's, what's probably the same? 86% for Galaxy Race, so they're sitting very Only comfortable to potentially for the take this game three and then head over and, and face Fnatic in the in the upper bracket finals. We've seen this Medusa matchup versus the Luna time and time again. I mean, it does not get easier. Uh, and that's a Daedalus finished on Dusa. Maybe Paulson will be able to get picked off here. Even that... Hey. Is so it's difficult. So like, not a use. She finally, but like, that took you five that heroes to get that, and you take a look at what's happening on the map. And the Mizu's farming mid, in your dreams pushing out top. You're getting so much more out of that. Yeah. Radiance top tower is I guess when you're behind, you'll, you'll take what you can get, though. Any little bit of, of net worth to kind of get you towards that next item is... You know, is, is there anything that could potentially stand out here from Radiant? I mean, Scardi almost completed for Luna. Um, Phoenix has got the Aghanim Shard, so now has Sunray through the Supernova, at least. Yeah, it's just a big problem. They don't have the damage to kill a Medusa right now. And they don't have the survivability to tank through the Medusa either. This is usually like when the game turns into the favor of the Dusa team. When you reach this threshold of just being, you know, too tanky and dealing too much damage. Oh, just look at his net worth. 20k, almost. Yeah, he is indeed the raid boss. And now he's also, it's not just him with all the net worth. It's also the team haste. behind him with a lot of gold as well. Black, and he's got haste, but who does he want to start the fight on? Savage able to reset. Mizzy with the Dark Ascension, though. They now have got the Vision Advantage with the jump in, but an instant yours. Can they find a, a perfect angle for the Rolling Thunder, though? They're going to be careful for that group up for the Soul Bind Cuckoo. It's a way for the Grim Stroke, but at least the Sunray can keep 23 Savage alive. And now they can turn once the BKB expires, but it's not going to matter here with both ultimates on cooldown. In your dreams, in such a powerful position on the high ground. It just rips them apart. The Daedal is going to work. The Solar Crest to enable you, and is getting grimmer and grimmer by the team fight. In quite literal sense as well, because Grimstroke is almost having his Axe Scepter. And once that's up, Luna's gonna work against you. Does he have BKB on Luna? He doesn't. He went full stats, and that's exactly what a Grimstroke love. uh, loves. They want to reinitiate again. Little lane ward here on Dyer. So see. Well, they're gonna scout out Zephyr for likely wants to jump, but. His team won't have that instant fall up. They still are a little bit too slow to, to help Alacrity unless Mizu's nearby with his own blink. All on now. If you can... I mean, do, do you feel like T1... How's their high ground defense? Like, maybe with the Leshrac shard... Although it really feels like he doesn't even have the net worth to even pick that one up. To protect you. 
Lash Shot to protect High Ground and, and Pangolier. It's just, they can just jump them easily. They just kill the Phoenix, Ogre is next. And they're just bleeding off kill after kill. Mizu is trying to look for the next one already. Won't be able to find one. But yeah, I think the point of no return has been reached pretty much. Like a Night Stalker this farmed is very scary. Same farm as Lash Shark. The information that Mizu can provide, I think more importantly, just to either jump the Phoenix and prevent the Sunray heal or prevent the Supernova, disrupt Cuckoo's Rolling Thunder as well. They're in on Carl, speaking about the Rolling Thunder, in they go. Mizu's is falling pretty low, but the chain lockdown isn't there to bring him down through the BKB. Now, Cuckoo, that is now your Rolling Thunder on cooldown. That is BKB used, though, from, uh, from Mizu. So we'll just look to find a reset. Roshan is available, though. Got the second rush of the game, and I feel like this is Galaxy Races to claim. Most likely, yeah. Although Pangolier is really strong in, uh, in these sort of situations, of course, it's very narrow. You'll be able to get multiple rolls on multiple heroes. Maybe that's a comeback way Radiant because Dusa doesn't have BKB, of course. But. Okay, they're going for it. They're committing for it. Dusa picked up her Aglims now. So even stronger team fight. Oh, gotta be careful, Sephir. Where are you going? Oh, they just got the Aglims as well on Grimshark. Yo, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that is the Dark Portrait. And Luna has to run from it. Dude, White Mon just better start running too. Oh my god, White Mon, you're dying. He's like, ping, 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 kill it. No, kill this, please. One. Luna half health from one Illu. Hmm. Very cool. Very nice. Well, that doesn't look too good, does it? <laughs> no, no, sir. Uh, Eighteen thousand net worth lead. Have to imagine they gave the Agnum shot to the Dusa, and they did. So Agnum Scepter and the Cold Blooded now available for your level twenty-four Medusa. Five levels over the less track Radiant's at the moment. They've even given her the attack. ages. Cheese is on Alacrity. This is all you need, feels like, for Galaxy Dyer's Racer to close this game out. Necrof, too. 9k out of the Luna. <laughs> Regeneration. Yeah, deny the tower. They're like, tower put us out of our misery now. Go. Top tower is under attack. Maybe that deny gives them a little bit of gold towards their next item. Gotcha. Maybe that's how they come back. Not feeling <laughs> it? Not, 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 not feeling it? Uh, how much gold is it? 80 a piece? Hey, that's... You'll take that when you're 20k gold behind. You take what you get, top lane. Now the pick off Alacrity is... I mean, it's had a very, very solid game. 5-3-5, five, and five, but his impact that we've seen on the Void Spirit makes me wonder why people aren't picking him as much, because we also saw... Uh, Fnatic earlier played and, and Xuan had a solid performance too. Yeah, it's kind of a forgotten hero. Strong laning phase and if not answered, okay, let's go hammer. As I said, they have one stun. Cuckoo! I'd be in trouble if he walks up that high ground. Might not even matter as Alacrity. Jesus. So much damage. He's got... The 20 talents to so the minus four Astro Step Charge Restore Time. He's also got that Quickening Charm as well. So he is got quite the items to enable the Void Spirit. Uku has no buyback. So that's definitely one side gone. Potentially even two. <laughs> and Polis is just <laughs> holding out White Mon. He's like, you think you're going to get back to the base? Nah, brother. I'll make you work for it. Maybe T2 Tower might help him out. Polo, keep... Playing up on him. Wants that outpost. That give me that experience. They're quite timid here. Luna shot, of course, very good to defend high ground with. That's definitely gonna get changed as well. There's the portrait. Radiance Savage, nice man to away. They've lost all the men are now on Medusa, but it doesn't matter because Mizu, a counter initiation, jumping the back line, and Luna needs help. She needs it now. Forced to drop the supernova, which is so far away from Galaxy Racer that can look to reset. And your dream still hasn't lost his first life, but he's losing an immense amount of mana. The dive bomb back to safety. 
But in your dream, when is he gonna end up dying, Keith? Oh, Finally! The Aghanim Shaw for the Lunas able to claim the kill. Leshrax getting a lot of health back as well. Galaxy Racer. They've had a little bit of a mishap here with their higher ground push, and it might cost them as with the Scardi slow thanks to the Aghanim Shard. Yokam's gonna end up falling as well. Yeah, the Lash X Shard, the Luna X Shard. Oh no, Carl, Ooh. gotta be careful. They've sprung the trap here on the higher ground. Void Spirit's gonna move on forward. Carl falling incredibly low. The crits from In Your Dream claims two. They eat the remnant as well. Does Savage it tip it in? He doesn't have a BKB. No buyback as well. Savage, the tips have to come into play with your TP in like that. And oh, it's gonna cost you drastically now. Yeah. Is it tier two bottom? So it won't be Megas. But this is probably. It's not the worst case scenario because it could get Megas, but this is like almost as bad. Medusa is just scaling more and more and more, and Yaluna is not really getting anything. 13k head now of the Luna. I mean, even at this point, Alacrity is a beast. Yeah, he's even going Octary next step. They've had enough. If they're not going to GG out, let's just force them. Put the foot to the throat, hit the T4 towers here. And they're just getting chunked down from this Solar Crest Medusa. She's already out of range and... Cuckoo's gonna make an attempt, but as soon as Cuckoo jumps, Alacrity mirrors that movement as well. Having a plus one advantage now with the Ogre down. Even a perfect soul by and usage from Yokam. He's so farm. Blink after the Aghanims. I mean, they've got buybacks. They don't want to force them out now with how close they are to respawning. So it'll be a four on five here, but in your dream. It's not going to have this second life. Is this going to cost them? Carl jumped in once again. I mean, you've got to just avoid the do so. They're going to, in fact, go directly at her head to head. They burnt the men out in your dream. Forced that back to safety. But now with the Aghanims, this AoE science here, is it going to disrupt the backline enough? It looks like it is. It gives in your dream space to get the mana back in our savage as well. Just cannot stand his ground and they've had enough. He's going to eat everything on Galaxy Racer. Not even thinking about retreating back. He's had enough. And it looks like so is Lash Track as well. Four down, no buybacks, and Galaxy Racer will move on to face Fnatic in our upper bracket finals. Sick. Game two, they lit didn't look too good, but again, like the playstyle of Galaxy Racer, you have to superior late game, you're happy to sit back and farm. Game one, game three, they did exactly that, and really kind of crushed he won in game three. Like it was pretty one sided. Didn't have a whole lot of a chance at all. Not even close. We're just seeing, it feels like too many times where this Medusa is getting picked up in a free game. And like we're calling it before it gets picked up and no one is putting enough respect to ban it. And when it's then picked up, no one's putting respect on picking the heroes to kind of deal with it. I mean, even Dream went 14, one and nine. This early void spread as well, props for Edge Human, Alacrity played incredible in this second game, uh, in this third game, apologies. He did. I mean, this is the second Void Spirit we saw today. Second Void Spirit we saw own, and maybe you know we'll put the hero back on the on the table because not a whole lot of teams are picking it up at all. Yeah, I feel like I mean we've seen it a couple times so far. Maybe we we'll get played a, a little bit more, but we'll uh, we should have an interview coming in shortly. Looks like in your dream will be joining us, so we'll uh, we'll bring him in. In your dream, congratulations on the victory. You guys are going to move on forward and, and face Fnatic over in the upper bracket finals here. Black, do you uh, have any questions to, to start us off? In your dream, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm good, I'm good, bro. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good too, man. Congratulations. Well done. Oh, thank you. How does it feel to play Medusa two times? Huh? <laughs> how, how does that feel, my friend? Uh, it feels quite rough because I'm not actually a Medusa player. <laughs> like, really? It doesn't feel like you aren't. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, I'm so shit at my farming pattern, but the team just made a call to do it, so you I'll just get what? it. You <laughs> to Luna. <laughs> <laughs> ever, ever so humble, of course. That's, that's why I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, Your how, turn, Aries. Uh, how, how we feeling about... What you potentially looking for with the uh with the next patch coming up? We we asked Raven earlier. He said he he wanted the the anti mage buff and he wanted the the Templar assassin nerf. The you got any two things that you're looking for? 
I just want Viper to get nerfs, to be honest. It's so strange to play against it. <laughs> I, I'm not sure about any carries, like, other than that. Because actually, I I want Troll to get buff again in in the next match. Troll. I'm looking forward on it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a specific question then. So, you yeah. went from mid to carry again. Are you going to stick as a carry now, or are you going to planning to go back mid again? Ah uh, yeah, it's quite a hard decision because switching back role to mid to carry and carry to mid, it's not really, not really good to me. But I'm gonna try hard uh, playing post one from now on onwards until the next patch and the next DPC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you've been doing super well as a post one. Probably one of the better transitions we've seen. And yeah, now you're going against Fnatic tomorrow. How confident are you that you're gonna beat them? Hundred percent or ninety nine? 99. <laughs> not, not really 100%. Like it's quite, it's quite rough to play against them because they're a very cool. well experienced team, right? So, yeah. Yeah. But okay. we're still gonna try our best to beat them tomorrow. Yeah. How's I the... mean, if you play like today, it's gonna, you know, it's a very realistic chance of you guys taking them down. How's the uh, the team chemistry been feeling after the the qualifiers? Have you guys taken a little bit of a reset? Like I know there's been a lot of third party tournaments, but was there like any talking done behind the scene from some of the the vocal people on on your team? Um, uh, we don't really practice a lot because we are doing on the break time, right? We're just waiting for the after TI because for the uh, after TI we're gonna stick in together and practicing. But I'm not sure lah because. Actually, Miracle talks a lot during in-game. He's a shot caller yep. for us, at least. Yeah. yeah that'd be uh, nice to have. How, how is, uh, is 343 coaching you guys as well? Oh, 343? Yeah, he's coaching us. Yeah. He yeah. used to be an analyst in the, yeah. in the team. He's helping with the draft with the X-Freedom also. So how much it, does that help? Yeah. Sorry? How much does that like, help you guys? It helps a lot, actually, because... I'm I'm a lazy guy. I don't really I don't really have a, a lot of heroes to play carry, but he keeps like giving me a replay to watch. Cause I, I'm not often watching replays, even during the old days. <laughs> I just gotta practice it by playing yeah. pops. That's for me at least. Okay. Well, you yeah. got any more questions, Aries? No, I'm good. Hopefully, with the the new patch coming up, the the grind comes back. You you can see the yeah. all your pub matches stack up, and you can you know get that hero pool building up as well. Team's always a, a pleasure to watch uh, in your dream, and hopefully your series versus Fnatic, you guys are able to the match up well against them. I think that is in not tomorrow. I think a a, a day after, so that's going to be days. Yeah. yeah exciting to see. But yeah, once again, congratulations on your series victory, and, and we'll see you guys up against Fnatic. Yep. yep, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. See you in two days, man. Good luck. All right. See you, bro. Yeah, bye bye. Thanks, Wish you healthy. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you, likewise. <laughs> okay, all right. What a uh, uh, what a great guy. I love him. Seems like you've got a uh, a lot of good connections with all the carry plays. Raven in your dream. I mean, you know me. You know, nice I'm guy, easy man. to get along with. Yeah, Dude. exactly. I'm super nice. Uh, you know, you might think I'm bullying you, but really, I'm just forging our bond. You know, and that's, that's all I'm doing. That's one way to put it. Forging the bond. Looks like Galaxy Race are continuing with their bond as well. They're going to move on forward, facing Fnatic in the upper bracket finals. You know, we saw Execration earlier drop down so execration's gonna verse team smg which we'll see tomorrow and also motivate trust will be taking on t1 now we're not casting tomorrow that's gonna be mlg mlp and john taking the reins let's do some quick predictions how are we feeling about those series we'll start with execration smg i actually smg look pretty good in their hmm. first series so that's gonna be very close but probably slight edge to execration like 55 45 and what about what well, motivate T1 then? T1. Oh, I, that's a very tough call. Like, I motivate always has this like potential. I feel like you know, yeah. but like they can never really quite get it. Like when it matters the most, and suddenly they just shut down and they play like only eighty percent instead of a hundred. So, I mean, you still gotta. Uh, say that the uh, t1 is the favorites right yeah. like they're just super experienced they don't look super well practiced right now because uh, again they probably came off a break or are still in the break 
it's like fanatic, you know, they're like, oh, we don't scrim at all, we don't care. <laughs> Waiting for the new patch to grind for TI. But yeah, T1 has to be the favorite. At like 60-40, at least. Yeah, it feels like uh, some of these teams are really at that stage right now where it's, it's all just eyes on the patch, eyes on when this comes out. And you know, we still got a couple of days. So I, I think this tournament's going to end before the patch. And so again, series tomorrow, MLP and John will be taking the reins. That's two incredible series. We'll be starting at the same time for the Loot Bet Pro Series Season 7. Until then, Black and I will be back for our upper bracket matches. Have a wonderful day everyone day and night as well see you guys back for some more loot bet pro series tomorrow